to talk about L graph. Let's just check that the video is ready. Yep. Video is running? Okay, thanks. So what I'm gonna be talking is a project we've been working on in the last year and a half. It's L graph, it's available in, in GitHub. We're still working on it, but I do background myself. So I'm a professor at UC Santa Cruz. That's the last picture I took from my research group. So I, my air research is computer architecture. So what I'm doing here is because as computer architect and also my consulting, I do a lot of with high end with people who are unlimited license on synopsis and things like that. And as a reference, you compile something like the Apple A11, it takes you like 20 minutes just to get it running. Uh, when we try to compile things with very later, we cannot run it in 24 hours. So there are very big designs, and so that's my problem. So my problem that I'm trying to solve in the part of the academic is that the hardware design productivity is, is horrible. And my target is to try to have better simulation and synthesis for FPGA and ASIC. Obviously, I cannot redo everything. I'm going to try to go a little bit better. So what are my hammers or what are my tools in order to get better is I have mostly three hammers. One is the life flow is what I'm being focusing and it's on the, the title of the project is called life graph. So we're going to see what is this life. Uh, the other one is we have elastic pipelines is to get more freedom to the synthesis tools to do transformations. I'm not going to cover this thing. And we have all this flow to enable new HDLs, but also not going to cover this. So what is this life? Uh, so you can think life as a positive batch because it's good to understand what I'm trying to optimize here. And in the life, you maximize developer utilization. On batch, you maximize computer utilization. I don't care so much, besides the cost of the machine, the computer, I care to be productive. So I want, I'm willing to throw CPU time in order to improve productivity. So why do we need life? I'm sorry to tell you, but we are all Doris. Um, so to solve problems, we can only use short-term memory. The short-term memory, unless you are superhuman, is in the few seconds. And that's the reason why you, there are so many studies that when you have a phone call, your productivity goes to hell. It's because you have to rebuild all the concepts and everything to solve the problem. So ideally, on the tool, you want to have a response time in the order of seconds. Now, when you are synthesizing, for many companies, it's a week. You might have your Friday meeting to have the results on the synthesis, and then you go over the, the results back, and then you do next iteration for the next week. That's not seconds. But really, even for running simulation, 20, 30 minutes, it's very common. And that's to run Hello World. So who is going live? You Google around, you will find something that is not what I'm doing, but really provides the concept of what I want to have in my tools. So you Google around, you live, live coding, there is people who like music and they like programming, and they go to parties in which they program the music interactively and they keep dancing with that. I have no clue about music, I cannot do that, but that's the feeling I want to have when I design on hardware. I want to do the quick interactions with the software, and I want to have the feedback very fast. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm building all these infrastructures who can aim towards that side, to have a very fast, quick interaction. Obviously, this is also useful for teaching and for learning the language is much easier because you can interact and quickly iterate over the project, no? So what is the life hardware flow that we have? So I'm gonna go over some early numbers, results that we have, and then hopefully I can do a demo and some little insights. Uh, so the idea is that we want to have a few seconds from code change to see the result change. Usually when you do some code change, you do a local edit. You don't do a search and replace. I don't change my rocket from 32 bits to 64 bits. I might do some local change. If I do a global change, a search and replace for everything, fine. It's gonna take you the hours. But most of the time, you don't do that. So in the simulation, I want to have like a incremental, all the time incremental, but also hot reload. So I want to run the simulation, stop it, do code changes, when stop the simulation in the cycle one million and then reload from that checkpoint very fast when I do code changes. In the FPGA, I want to do place and route uh, with incremental synthesis and place, and place and route. And on ASIC, I want to get the feedback on timing. Notice in all those things, I want to do very fast response times because I do incremental changes. I don't want approximate models. I want to run the real thing. But 
I can do it not because I have magic in my algorithms, it's because I only do a subsection of the problem. That is the incremental part. So the code, we are working on it, it's available online, which means that because we're working on it, it has some little faults, or big faults. Uh, but what are the other open software tools? This is not an exclusive list, but some of them. So there is several languages, there are several front ends, like very late to your and we interface with many of them. And there are some other backends. So the first question is, okay, why are you doing yet another tool, no? So why not to do X tool, and X is whoever. Uh, I cannot use commercial tools. One main reason is because I need to have access to the source code to do code changes in order to improve all these incremental things. Impossible to do it unless I have access to the internals. So then there are three major options that we were considering there. There is Arsyn, there's Fertile, and there's Yosis. Um, my issue, I want to do synthesis and simulation. So neither of them target the three of them because I will have this live focus to very fast response time. I'll have to reward the internal structures through either that I pick and it will make it very difficult. And none of them has a focus on debug, at least like, as much as I want to do for the response time incremental. So the, the end result, we had to do our own tool. And that's what is L graph. So in a way, like many of the people are pitching, is the LLVM for hardware. Uh, you can think it's open access plus plus, or now in uh, Synopsis they have NDM database plus plus, whatever you want to call it. So the idea is that you have uh, some way to input into your database, then you have your database format that is the indel graph, and then you have many past transformations. We have a dead code elimination, or you can call ABC to do some synthesis, or you can call mock turtle, which is another synthesis tool, open timer, and then you generate again a database in L graph. And you can do many iterations over this. Whenever you are done, you can go and output to the code generation. Uh, so this is the, the general idea of L graph, no? So I'm not gonna go over the details, how it's really implemented. It's more for pitching how to do. But I'm gonna show some results because I think they motivate to see how to use the tool, no? So one thing is like, we want incremental, we want to be fast, we want to go in seconds, we are obsessed with the speed. So this is some numbers that we, um, there are several designs. We load the design, we do like a topological sort, which is very typical thing for when you compute timing, traversing forward on the graph. And we do that like 10 times, and then you save the results. And there's the comparing L graph versus R scenes versus Yossi's. So no need to look at the numbers. Yes, not this one, but it's very short. The other one is very big. <laughs> <laughs> so it's much faster. So what is the other thing that we do is we can interface with commercial tools. This was with results that we did before we port the things to C++. It was our Ruby base because we prototyped many things in Ruby. And here what we did is we have a design that the baseline takes like 29 minutes to synthesize, and then we do many little code changes. Why there are so many bars? Because it depends whether you use in your incremental code change, whether you change. So then you synthesize and you generate the DC, so you pass a subsection of the netlist to DC, and then you stitch back the netlist. There was no quality of results degradation uh, for these things, the frequency was the same. And instead of 29 minutes, we're doing around one minute on average. In worst case, it was five minutes. For this, we were having design compilers, a demon right on the background and sending that list. If we were having the access code and we use ABC, we can get much, much faster response times. Some other area in which we have been applying, so this was recently accepted for DAC for this year, is we do incremental placement and routing with a Vivado uh, flow. Because at the time we didn't have rapid write was not always. Uh, we were going through the T-call interface. But here again, it's just to show you the y-axis in seconds. So in a few seconds we can get many designs. We regenerate up to place and route. If you notice the colors, a big chunk of the time is elaboration, which means reading the very log. Uh, if you do non-incremental design, that's not gonna be the case. 
So it's going to be elaboration is a very small part of your pie. The fact that it's, a small, it's such a big part of the pie is not that we have a slow elaboration, is that the other things are very fast. Uh, but now elaboration is showing in our face, so we are starting to work to have a faster elaboration. So this is for FPGA. Now, another thing that I mentioned before, we are targeting synthesis and simulation. Uh, so what do we have in simulation? This is still not in the open uh, on the GitHub because we submitted and it got rejected recently, but we keep trying. Um, so what is this thing? So we want to have hot reload. So you run your program, Verilog. In our case, we have our own HDL, but it should work with Verilog. And you stop the simulation, then you do a code change, and you reload it. For the, all the changes that we try, we were able to reload in less than two seconds to generate a new executable all the time. Uh, but the question is, well, how fast is your simulator? So here is a 16 core, RISC 5 core that we implemented just to test our HDL. And we can generate very log, so we can compile with very later. So with very later, it was taking uh, around half a minute to compile for that small design. And then if we were running, it takes 10 million cycles. It was taking around 3.5 minutes in that small design thing. So live sim, it starts with two seconds to compile for the code change because incremental much faster. And the simulation was still a little bit faster than very later. Uh, obviously, the how to load is always two seconds. So what is the point here is that one of the challenges of using very later is very good. We really like it. But if you have a very large design, it gets very slow to compile. And here is the, it's not really improving the speed. We're improving the speed just by chance because we have a lower ICASM rate because we reduce the size of the binary. It's not that it was our target, but because we have optimized so much the code generation, the eye catch footprint is much better. The speed is faster for large designs. For a small design, if I do something like the GCD, example of the chisel, we're on the same speed as very later. So this is a lot of people working. It's a large contribution, no? So in the past, the, the, uh, Rafael is the main contributor has been on this project. But usually what I do is I have one or two PhD students and a little army of masters. My little army of masters they are very unpredictable, and they only work for one quarter or two. So it makes it a little bit harder to push this project. But that's on the way that I try to push the resources for this project. Uh, so it's a significant effort. And just as a reference, I, was, I pull a lot of open source uh, hardware projects to see how many lines of code. Uh, we are doing around 100,000 lines of code per year commits. Um, our code size is only around 36K, and we have been working a year. So what happens? It's like we keep refactoring like crazy because we keep improving our flow. So we keep doing commits, commits over the same thing and changing to improve the speed and performance. So the one thing I wanted to show is to have some code. So this is to output the graph bits. So you can iterate over the graph. So you iterate over the nodes and you will have the slides later so you can have an idea of how to do it. But the idea is that the code is very compact, very clean. That's one of the reasons why we do many iterations over the source code. That as new students start to look at the thing, they don't understand. OK, if one student doesn't understand, but then you have a PhD student who doesn't understand either and do mistakes, maybe it's the API problem. So then we have to rework over the API. So what is the current, and I call LGRAPH 0.1 alpha release? So that's what you have there. I was trying to do the 0 0.2, and it's what I've been talking because it's what I was trying for latch up, but we missed the deadline. That's for the shameful pace. But now the regression is changing, is failing because we changed the API based on this thing I mentioned, the feedback, that implementing some of the blocks, the students were getting confused, so we have a new API. But what are the main things that we have done there on the 0.2 release? mostly from the Fertile team, from the Adam, they have like uh, annotations. Uh, we were doing different annotations, were more per module, and they do more per instance. And we think that is a very powerful thing, like for things like uh, uh, you know, properties like the delay or things like that. So we have been reworking the whole thing for that. We have the open timer integration that is starting to work in some numbers, but it's still not working there. 
And we're integrating more Tartool, which is a, a um, European project alternative to ABC for synthesis. So what are the LGRAPH 0.3 goals? And that's for the end of the year. So we are trying, as I mentioned before, the elaboration time is taking a big chunk of our time. So what we are doing is a new sub-project that is to do parsing, very fast incremental parsing. The annotations, we have them, but we have all the incremental work, but the annotations, they still don't go with incremental, so how are we gonna make the annotations incremental? Uh, the goal target for one of the students is to do boom, uh, parsing and synthesis in under two seconds with incremental. So we're still not there, but you will see some work. I have a master's student, rapid write integration, and one of the PhD students is working on, co on coverage, coverage things, research. So hopefully we'll have something. So a little demo. So what do we have? Do we have the screen? No, I have to stop the other screen. So what do I have here for the little demo? So I have a, since there's people from FireSim later token, so I have a FireSim dump, uh, and it's around 36 megabytes. It's a one core bo boom, but I have same with multi-core. So we have a console ng shell, which is the, 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 the graph that we have. You have commands that you can do. It's different passes that you can implement. But for example, the first thing that we have is light parse and this design. So it's able to read the 36 megabytes, split in multi-modules in 1.2 seconds. So if I go LGDB, it generates all these files. So I go graph library.json. Yeah. Yeah. So it generated all those very log files so that now it can synthesize and uh, elaborate in parallel. So the first thing we do is very fast to split the thing many files and I can synthesize in parallel. This is my little laptop. I don't have so many CPUs, so I'm gonna just run one of them. <laughs> but if I have a cloud, I can do it much faster. So after I split the thing, I can get one, for example, the issues lot. I can just elaborate this module. And if I want, I can go and, and call the graph bits output. And then, so I have here the generated log file. As you notice, the, we parse the very log for 36 megabytes. We generate the split the things. We can start to synthesize the thing in parallel. And we can stitch all the blocks. And there's a big focus on the split. If we have, in, and this was parsing from text, if I have it on the internal database format that is memory map, I can read boom, dead code elimination, save it in less than half a second. So, the, there are different things to, to wear in, in order to go fast. So this is mostly what I wanted to, to talk, is to present our Dell graph. We have a big focus on the speed, and that's what we want to do. Uh, but we want to target synthesis simulation, as the slide with the shameful pace show is like, don't clone it today, because uh, we're in the middle of the API change, wait a couple of weeks. Uh, but we are actively working on this, and I have active uh, PhD students and master's students working. Uh, hopefully, as the, the thing gets more stable, more mature, I'm gonna have to start more users outside. From, at, from the moment, the only ones who have been trying actively outside was in, at Google, a team try, and they point to interesting problems that, for example, we do everything memory map, and there was very large designs and they were running out to 30,000 memory maps and then we have to do garbage collection on the memory maps in order to scale up. So there's a big focus on how to scale up our designs, how to be very fast response time. The algorithms is not big novelty, it's just reusing whatever is there on the literature, interfacing with third tools. Main part is how to chunk it up to small incremental parts so we pass small incremental parts to the tools. We don't give them the whole boom which is, that's the main novelty, is how to group it, partition, sub-partition, and then give a small chance to the tools to work. So, any question? Yes, wherever questions.
Hey, how's it going? Um, I was just curious if you had any um, suggestions for where to get started looking up anything for contributing to that. So the, we are doing everything on the GitHub. Right. So the thing that, for example, we are trying to, I was trying to get a Google Summer Code student working, is to interface with some other third party tools that people might want to, what is your favorite tool, how to interface it? Uh, for example, one thing that we don't have is net, the, there is the new diagram that I saw this morning, the net, net PSG, the, for the net list for visualization. So in our case, we output graph bees, which it works fine when you have like up to 20 nodes, but you have anything bigger than that and it gets starting to be very messy, but it, the students who are learning, they really like this. So I was thinking when I saw this, like, oh, maybe I'll find another master student to, <laughs> to do this. But instead of finding master students, if someone outside want to interface with their favorite tool, that will be the best thing, is to interface with the favorite tool. Okay, thank you. So I was curious, uh, have you looked at the three-seater parser generator? Uh, so GitHub has a new parser generator, which is incremental. Yeah, the three-seater. Three yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been looking at the three-seater. Um, I like some of the things that they do in incremental, um, but the issue I was having is that when it's not incremental, it's not very fast on that one. It's very fast parser. Uh, so I've been, I've been playing a little with it. The, there are two main reasons why I'm not doing, we're doing our own custom parser. One is uh, for speed reasons, but the other one, and that was the, one of the deciding ones, is that we want to get very good feedback on the compile errors warnings outside. And in order to that, we think we have to do more like Clang on the, don't do an automatic generated compile, uh, parser, is to do more like uh, your custom parser and then you embed very carefully the warnings that you're gonna be generating. So we are looking at different ways to generate a much more human-friendly warnings when we are doing our own HDL. If it's a totally working very lock and you just want to elaborate, then I think it's a very reasonable thing. Yes, it, it, it's actually a recovering parser, 3 seater so yeah. uh, it, it's not only incremental, it's, it's not failing parser, so if you make a mistake, uh, it's continuous. Yeah, I, I've been following, but for example, this, if someone wanted to implement, currently we have the Geosis as an interface for Verilog. So if someone wants to do a 3 seater interface, that will be something that will be totally doable. So yeah, I implemented the uh, system very low grammar for three seater. Ah, you are the one who. Yeah, so okay. it's it's already on the three seater org, so it's very low 2017. So you can try. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? I have a question. Uh, so um, if I got this correctly, you said you could do uh, incremental place and route. Yeah, so that one, the, the student who was working is here today. Uh, so what we did is, in a previous work with the incremental synthesis, and then it was, well, now you have to play some route. So what do you do? If you do an FPGA, you, you, the optimizations that we do is like, oh, maybe I just program the LATs in a different way, but I don't change the interconnection. So I don't have to replace that way, just to reprogram the LAT. So you try to reduce the problem of what you have to do. Only the LATs that they change interconnectivity, then through the TICL interface, we're telling, okay, you replace that one specifically. Don't replace everything. And by doing that, then we can have a much faster response times. So have you tried this in, uh, in, uh, in practice with like an XPNR or a Rackna PNR? We BPR have not tried the open source flow and we thought about using BPR for a paper because you have full access to it. But we were concerned paper-wise that they will say, oh, but you are playing with not a commercial flow. So it's not the same quality. So then we, what we did is we used the, the Vivado TICL interface and show, look, even with a slow TICL interface, which having the same quality as what you have, you have the same quality results. The way that the system flow is built, you can, the incremental synthesis works with ABC or DC with whatever, the incremental placement, if we are putting our hands, if we can do different optimizations. Technically, I like a little more an analytical placer that uh, simulating annealing that what they are doing all those tools and open source for the optimizations I can do in incremental but there is no incremental analytical 
and uh, no oh, analytical open source placer as far as I know. I bet no one in here can do one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next up on stage are three persons. Let's see, this would be two. Then we need to present yourselves because I wouldn't know which two of you there is. Oh, yeah. 